What's going on, poor fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we're going to be previewing round 12, Port Adelaide versus Geelong. This Friday night in a massive game at Metricon Stadium. It's one of the biggest games of the, of the year in terms of uh, the AFL prospect uh, with the ladder, first versus third. Um, and it's yeah, it's just an, um, well, it's going to be an unbelievable game of football, isn't it? With uh, two teams in red hot form, St Kilda losing to Geelong by uh, 59 points. And Port Adelaide uh, got across the line against Richmond by 21 points in probably what was the game of the year. So these two teams coming together in some form is going to no doubt produce a very good quality game of football. Let's get straight into it though and preview this week's game. Talk about a bit of history between these two. Um, <laughs> I know as Port fans, we don't particularly like Geelong for that dreadful day in 2007. But since then, we've only beaten Geelong twice. And it's been few and far between. Both have been at the Adelaide Oval, one in 2014 on Anzac uh, Day, which was, well, it feels like a lifetime ago now, at the Adelaide Oval. Um, and also as uh, early as last year, where we bet them by... What was it? I think it was about 14, 15 points, something like that, at the Adelaide Oval. So, wins between Port Adelaide and Geelong have been few and far between. They've had definitely had our measure uh, for a long period of time. But now, this game is not being played at the Adelaide Oval. It's not being played at uh, GMHBA Stadium. It's being played at the Portricon, or as the rest of the AFL know it, as Metricon Stadium. So, Friday Night Football, a big, big game. I'm thinking it's going to be uh, an absolute nail-biter because these two teams are in form, as I said before. Geelong did, well, they belted St Kilda, really. They were just on from the start and were able to um, just continually press uh, St Kilda. And, well, they just crumbled under pressure, didn't they, the Saints? So, And with Tom Hawkins kicking five goals, that produces another uh, threat for Port, uh, Port's defence this week. Coming up against Jonas McKenzie and... Cleary, I think Geelong, well, we've got to get our matchups right this week because no doubt I feel they can expose us with a little bit of height. Um, and Tom Hawkins being that big, strong-bodied uh, full forward, they've had, well, a few of those have had trouble um, against us recently. So with Rewalt kicking a couple of goals last week, uh, no doubt, I think Tom Cleary would definitely take Tom Hawkins. Uh, the two Toms against each other will be a very, very good clash. So... That's probably one end of the uh, one end of the scale. At the other end, who takes Dixon? It's going to be an interesting prospect to see what Geelong's defence do with that. Uh, Lockie Henderson is in some fine form at the moment. Funny story, hey, how Mackenzie and Henderson were both on the fringe of being basically delisted. They had a lifeline at the end of the last year, given one more go, and now look at them. They're both thriving in uh, their respected team's defences. So it's just an amazing... Uh, coming of age really for both players who have struggled with their careers and uh, haven't really gotten going. So Lockie Henderson, does he take Charlie? Most likely. Blitzarves could be another option. Um, you No doubt he'll be uh, one to watch as well because he just generates so much run and class uh, for Geelong. So it's, it's interesting, isn't it? But I think the biggest challenge will be the midfield. Um, and we've seen last week with Port Adelaide's midfield... Actually, the last three games, Port Adelaide's midfield has strongly been consistent in that contested pressure uh, pressure area. And we saw the pressure gauge last week on Fox Footy's coverage. Our pressure gauge did not leave the elite category. So if Power Pepper, Wines, um, Rockcliffe, Boak, Robbie Gray, when he's in there, if they can apply that pressure and continually pepper... Um, Geelong's midfield and the, and around the contest, then that contested game is just going to become so important uh, for Geelong to win. Otherwise, I think Port Adelaide could even run away with this one. Obviously, if we're not on form, I do we might struggle a bit more. We can't have a, a lapse like we did against the Dogs, where we played one quarter of football and ended up being one quarter of football that we had to do to win the game. So I feel like now that. We've had that game, uh, well, it obviously it was a four-day break, so having that four-day break did uh, affect us a little bit playing that game. And now that Geelong are coming off a four-day break, does that play into Port's hands a little bit more? We've had a six-day break. We're a little bit more fresh. Our recovery is going to be good. You know, a four-day break sometimes can be can play into your hands and you can be uh, really positive and just purely base yourselves on recovery and then go straight into the next week if you're on form. 
Um, and St Kilda, that they they uh, they took advantage of that. Well, not St Kilda, sorry, Geelong took advantage of that. Yeah, I, I can't see Geelong playing an aggressive style of game as they did against St Kilda. Whereas Port Adelaide, I can see they can bring that intensity again. But the problem with Port is we've seen in the past they've played games of football where they've you know, dominated like they did against Richmond. A big, big win. They were able to get that monkey off the back. They're no longer pretenders. They're contenders. And then they'll come up against uh, you know, a team. Well, Geelong's obviously another quality opposition, so another test. But, you know... I think a lot of Port, Port supporters would agree that we come up against teams after a big... It's like showdowns. We end up somehow losing it. We'll, we'll just drop the ball a little bit and we won't end up uh, anywhere near as good as what we should be. So this is a different story. Uh, I feel like another test, another big game, and we can stand up to it. And, you know, it's going to come down to, one, keeping that same momentum, that same pressure at the contest. Two, kicking straight. I think you know twenty eight shots on goal last week didn't do didn't do uh, yeah the scoreboard justice I feel in that last quarter. Now the game was even for three quarters, no doubt about that. But that last quarter where we just kept kept peppering the goals and just couldn't get the job done on our good plays. I feel like now that's something we can build on. And if you can punish your opponent early like we did, you know four goals to nothing, and then in the last quarter kick three goals in two minutes. Peppering the goals. Charlie had a couple of easy ones. So, yeah, it's going to be that those couple of factors that will really affect how this game will pan out. And Geelong just have to do their job. They know how to play football and they know how to win. They've been a winning side for so long now that they just know how to get the job done. Um, when they crumble, though, they do crumble. But when they stand up, they're as good as anyone and they're right in this. They're a real contender this year. And I think they're slipping under the radar a little bit. So Port Adelaide have to be on. We have to be on. Simple as that. I can confirm two changes for Port Adelaide this week. Mays comes in for Lena after that one week suspension. Sutcliffe is a late change. Uh, was a late change for Rosie last week. He now comes out and in comes back from injury Stevie Motlop. So he hasn't played since that game against Carlton with that angry ankle injury. So it'll be good to have him back. A bit of pace around the ball. Bit of slickness, a uh, bit of crafty work against his old side. Um, I think that, that's a definite, definite win in selection with Motlop coming back. He was in decent form before getting injured, so he's going to add a bit more to um, around the contest, but also that speed that we uh, constantly now have. And he's got some good ball skills as well, so he knows where the goals are, and that'll just help us even more. And Mays, we've seen how good he's been since coming into the side, and that's a straight swap for Lena. So. Uh, Really good changes for Port this week. Ebert didn't come up. Uh, he's very close. Burton's very close as well. And Westhoff, obviously, out with a... Well, he was rested, but also with a bit of form. Um, be interesting to see how George Artis goes this week. The spotlight's probably on him a little bit, I think. Since that Melbourne game, he hasn't quite had that same impact as yet. And that will come with youngsters. They'll be on and off from game to game. So Westhoff might be a change for him soon enough. Um, maybe. But that's just a suggestion. But other than that, good changes and uh, it's going to be a big one. Final thoughts on this game. I'm tipping Port by 18 points. Three goal win. I feel like we'll just have Geelong's measure. We don't lose at the Port Tricon. Um, it's it's definitely become a home away from home. And I feel uh, Geelong, they did play in Perth last week, I'm pretty sure. So that travelling with a four-day break might just get to them in the end. And I hope Port Adelaide come out with a hot start because... To put a team that's had a four-day break after playing a challenging game against St. Kilda, even though it was an easy win, to come off that and then come into this a big Friday night football game, a hot start for Port will really put the test to Geelong. Well, Port fans, that wraps up my re preview for round 12. Port Adelaide vs Geelong, Friday night footy. I don't think there's been a bigger Friday night game we've had in a long time. So... Make sure you're tuning in and watching it from home or if you're a Queenslander, you're lucky enough to go to the game. Make sure you enjoy it as well and cheer loud because I think uh, if we win this one, the questions of are we contenders that are still out there will just be thrown out. We'll be clear favourites for this year, I reckon. So big game, big test.
got to get the job done. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way across the season. We're so close now to 3,000 subscribers, so make sure you jump on board if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Anthony, and as always, count the pair.